Hello, and welcome to our webinar on using census data to support your data needs, a census toolkit. Thanks for joining us. My name is Leslie Phillips, and I'm an epidemiologist and the scientific director at the Urban Indian Health Institute. And I'll be giving a little introduction to the speakers ahead. Those will be also joining us are Tina Norris. She's a survey statistician in the Racial Statistics Branch of the U.S. Census Bureau, and she's one of the lead analysts on research regarding American Indian and Alaska Native population. This webinar is hosted by the National Council on Urban Indian Health, and Kimberly Fowler represents NICUI. Dr. Fowler is the Technical Assistance and Research Coordinator at the National Council of Urban Indian Health in Washington, D.C., where she provides data training and resource assistance to the 34 urban Indian health programs across the nation. Dr. Fowler has supported a number of initiatives through the coordination and delivery of technical assistance in health systems and clinical operations, including a variety of health education projects focused on reducing health disparity risk for communities of color. So in order to contextualize Dr. Fowler and Dr. Norris's talks ahead, I wanted to talk about just what is census data and how can these data be important? And when we talk about census data in this context, we're actually talking about two data sources. The first you probably just think of as census data. That's the decennial every 10 year census. And it's used to collect age, sex, race, ethnicity, geography, things we would call basic demographic variables. And you might remember that the census used to have a long form. Well, it does no, no more. And what has replaced the long form is the ACS. And as you can see, that stands for the American Community Survey. And the ACS really gets at some of the housing and economic characteristics that can better characterize a population. It is not a full census of the population, but it is conducted more frequently and serves as a representative sample. And Dr. Norris will be talking about the difference between these two data sources a little bit later. So one thing to know about census and ACS data is why these data have some advantages. And one of the advantages of these data are really the quality of these data. Um, they have high coverage rates. In other words, they cover, in the terms of the census, the full population, and in terms of the ACS, a representative sample but it's really trying to get at the full population of people living in the United States. And that really helps us when we think about um, and have concerns over selections. Is this population representative of our population? And also related to representation is response rates. We know that when we have a survey and only say 20% of our intended respondents respond, that those 20% are often very different than the 100% who we're striving for. And census really works hard to get people to respond and have high response rates. And this is really important in terms of data quality and having data that really represents the population about which we have questions. Also important is item response. Response rate in general refers to this idea of are you participating or not participating in the questionnaire in the survey. But item response happens or item non-response happens when people opt to participate in the survey, but in fact they don't answer every question. And census has certain protocols for addressing these concerns and trying to fill in these gaps when they exist, when appropriate. And there's also coding. So for some census question, there's not a checkable answer. There's an other answer. And people are invited to write in their response. And census goes through these response and tries to code them in an analyzable format. So all these things make these data very favorable to work with. So what makes these data unique? These variables are not easily found elsewhere. And when they are found elsewhere, they might be more prone to selective response or a less population-based sample. Also, it's important to note that federal assistance programs use a variety programs use a variety of formulas to determine funding. So, um, census data really can be the basis for getting a piece of the federal funding program pie. 
And the other important thing to point out is that, unfortunately, the populations we represent tend to be small populations. So there are many large data sets that simply don't capture them or capture them in a racial category called other. And these data are not helpful for us in the way that census data are. So how can census and data, census and American Community Survey data help a UIHO? Well, UIHOs often rely on demonstrating need to their funders. And because funding doesn't grow on trees, giving funders the data they need to continue funding or start funding is really important. These data can also give you trends over time that can help you predict need. So you may know the need now, but what's the need a year from now? And what's the need going to be five years from now so you can plan for that need? And census data can be used in these respects as well. They can also be used to plan for specific service capacities, given a limited funding or a budget perhaps, or given limited capacity to write grants where should you focus your energy or your dollars? Well, understanding from census data what the specific service needs are might be helpful. And lastly, we often are concerned not only about the health of American Indians and Alaska Natives, but also how their health compares to the larger community. In fact, what is the disparity? And census data are also very helpful in that regard as well. So it is my great hope that the talks ahead will give you all the tools you need to use census data and ACS data, but I wanted to let you know that as part of our role and our mission here at the Urban Indian Health Institute, we have a data request and technical assistance process. So if you ever encounter a roadblock and you could use guidance or help sorting through these data or pulling specific data, we'd be happy to do that. And the contact information appears on this slide, as well as on the UIHI website. And for now, I'm going to turn it over to our other two speakers. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Fowler from the National Council of Urban Indian Health here in Washington, DC. I will be covering the topics of where to access census data, types of census data sources available, and definitions of census. The data system that the Census Bureau uses is called the American Fact Finder. It is an electronic system for assessing and disseminating data on the internet. It offers prepackaged data and allows users to create data tables and maps from results of population, housing, economic, and geographical data. The website itself is www.factfinder2.census.gov. As seen here, this is an example of the main page of American Fact Finder. And you can see that on the left-hand side, there are several options for you to choose from when searching, such as topics, geographies, race and ethnic groups, and industry codes. One important area of this main page I'd like to um, focus on is the news and notes section. This section is really important for you to look at when you are on the website to see if there are any changes in any tables or documents that have been published previously. This normally lists also when different data sets may be um, presented and published onto their website. Through American Fact Finder, you have the ability to access data from several Census Bureau collection products, which can give you detailed information on the U.S. and its territorial populations. These products are Decennial Census, American Community Survey, Puerto Rico Community Survey, the Economic Census, the Population Estimates Program, the Annual Economic Survey, and other business-related surveys. The economic census is collected every five years and gives a snapshot of the U.S.'s economic status. The Population Estimates Program provides data in the interim of census, which allows for projections on population as well as past populations. The economic survey is an interim survey 
for the economic census and the business related surveys composed of patterns and expenses in the US's economy. So what exactly are the differences between census and ACS, which is the American Community Survey? The decennial census is a complete inventory of the population and housing that is taken by the Census Bureau every 10 years. The census strength is that it's able to estimate the population total. The census occurs in years ending with zero and is actually constitutionally required every 10 years to reapportion the U.S. House of Representatives as well as other local policy events. The American Fact Finder contains web, excuse me, the American Fact Finder website contains data from 2010, 2000, and 1990. The 1990 information is archived on the American Fact Finder website. If you would like information for previous censuses, such as 1980, they are located on the U.S. Census Bureau's main website. The American Community Survey, or ACS, is a nationwide demographic survey conducted which provides the current profiles of America's communities via a questionnaire. It is only distributed to a sample of the population in order to project social, housing, economic, and demographic statistics in a one, three, and five-year estimate fashion. The strength of the ACS is that it's able to estimate characteristic distributions. It is recommended to compare derived measures such as percents, means, medians, and rates only through ACS, rather than estimates of population totals, which would be garnered best through the decennial census data. As you can see, the ACS is not a complete enumeration like the census is. Detailed information is available and searchable by data sets as listed in this example screenshot of the American Fact Finder website. You can see that they are broken down by tables, files, or documents. The census data sets are recognized as forms of summary files. There are summary files one through four, and as seen in the first line, there is the 2010 SF2 100% data data set. Whereas the American Community Survey is listed by the estimate year, as seen on the second line's document, where it is the 2010 ACS five-year American Indian and Alaska Native tables. You can see that there are many documents available to choose from depending on the preferred topic as listed here, you can see that there are data sets on selected social characteristics in the U.S., selected housing characteristics, age groups and sex, and even total population. For further information on what is contained within a data set, you can always click on the information button that's located to the right-hand side of that data set, denoted by the little I. Once clicked, you will see an example of the format of that data set without data in it, thus giving you an idea of what type of information is held within that data set. This example is from the Summary File 2 Age and Sex data set. Many funding sources request specific population data in applying for or maintaining grants. Thus, I would like to cover some of the census variable definitions for you today. Remember, you always must first understand what is being asked of you before you can search and find the answer, which is your data. The next slides list the most commonly required information asked of our programs and how census defines them. The first two are related to total populations of American Indian and Alaska Native populations. The first being the percent total, the percent of the total population. This is the number of people that identify through census as an American Indian or Alaska Native that are located in a specific area served, such as a urban Indian health program, in relation to the total population of all races in that area. 
Whereas if you're looking for the total AIAM population that is 22 years old and younger as a percent of the population, this would be referring to the number of people who are below the age of 23 and identified or self-identified as AIAN in a designated area in relation to the total number of AIAN in that designated area, which would then be the percent of that population. The next definition that I would like to cover is the median household and or family income. The median household income is the income amount based on the past 12 months that best equally distributes all incomes into two groups, mainly one above the median and one below the median. The median household income includes all members residing in a household while the family median income is based only on family unit types that census has defined as one, a married couple family, two, a male householder, no spouse present family, or three, a female householder, no husband present family. You should note that not all households contain families since a household may comprise groups of unrelated people or one person living alone. The next two areas of definitions I would like to cover are unemployment and poverty rate. Unemployment, or the percent of civilian workforce, includes all persons 16 years old and older that are unemployed if they were, one, not at work or with a job but not at work during the reference week, two, were actively looking for a job during the last four weeks, or three, were available to accept a job. These would in be included in your unemployment tabulations. The poverty rate is a measure of the number of individuals or families deemed poor that fall below the relevant income threshold set by the Office of Management and Budget in a given period of time. This number would be divided by the possible number of these occurrences during that period in order to come up with your rate of poverty or your poverty rate. Educational attainment. This refers to the highest level of education in terms of level of schooling finished or highest degree completed. The data can be broken down into percentages of each obtainable category, such as a percent of bachelor's degree or higher, or the percent of high school or less graduates which can also be broken down even further by gender. The percent single parent households, which also can be looked at through the percent female head of family with children if a single parent household is unavailable in that data set. This is the number of female householder, no husband present with own children under 18 and would be used to find out the percent from all family households with children. Note that this does not include same-sex households. Same-sex households are included in family household categories only if there is one additional person related to a householder by birth or adoption. Thus, same-sex households with no relatives are considered non-family households and would not be included in Householders' families tabulations. Lastly, I would like to define um, the different areas of race and how they're presented in census data. There are race alone, race in combination, and race alone or in combination categories. The race alone category specifies respondents that have indicated only one race or more than one tribe. In other words, if someone has specified that they are American Indian and Alaska Native alone. The race and combination category are respondents that have chosen more than one of the race categories available. They would be someone that has selected American Indian and Alaska Native as well as white as a race category. 
The last category is a combination of the two prior ones, race alone or in combination. This is the maximum number of people reporting American Indian or Alaska Native, whether or not they reported any other races. This would be a combination of the Alaska, excuse me, the American Indian or Alaska Native alone and Alaska Native and American Indian in combination with one or more races. Thus, if you're searching for the number, the total number of a population in your area, you would want to select the race category of race alone or in combination so that you can obtain all those respondents that included American Indian or Alaska Native, whether or not they reported any other race. All of the definitions and information that I've covered are easily searchable through American Fact Finder's website. However, that there are any other questions or any other terms that you are unfamiliar with, you can always look on the American Fact Finder main page where you can find the bar tool called Using Fact Finder. This Using Fact Finder page displays a help button a glossary which contains most of the terms located on American Fact Finder, as well as a frequently asked questions area which lists questions that have been relayed to the Census Bureau. Through looking at this page, you'll be able to decipher any areas that you may not understand more. If you would like any information or one-on-one -on -one technical support from the CUI staff, please feel free to contact us at the information below, as well as this information um, for requests can be sent out through our website, which is www.nakui.org. Now I would like to turn over to Tina Norris from the U.S. Census Bureau, who will provide you with the details of searching Fact Finder. Hello. I will cover four topics in today's discussion. First, I will present an overview of the 2010 Summary File 2 data product. Then I will walk through an example of how to access Summary File 2 data in American Fact Finder. Next, I will present an overview of our recently released ACS five-year selected population tables and ACS five-year AIN tables. Finally, I will walk through an example of how to access ACS five-year selected population tables data in American Fact Finder. Before I continue with the first example, I wanted to point out some details regarding the content of the 2010 Summary File 2 data product. This past April, the Census Bureau released Summary File 2 tables, which provide demographic information such as age, relationship, and homeownership, iterated by specific race and ethnic groups at various levels of geography. More information about the Summary File 2 data product is available at the web address at the bottom of this slide. Summary File 2 provides users with population count at numerous levels of geographies ranging from states, counties, places, census check in American Indian and Alaska Native areas. Two types of thresholds were used to determine inclusion in the Summary File 2 product. For AIN groups, a national count of 7,000 or being included in Summary File 1 was needed. For all other race and Hispanic groups, at least 100 person count at the national level was required or being included in the redistricting data file. Also, all groups had to have at least 100 people at any given level of geography for that data to be published for that group. Census data can be found by going to American Fact Finder 2 website. Note the address at the bottom of this slide. And now for the first example. Let's begin by looking at how to get 2010 data on the total AIN population 22 years old and younger in Butte, Montana. This information may be obtained in our 2010 Summary File 2 product. First, under the Tropic Topics drop-down menu, click on Data Set to expand the selections. Then select 2010 SF2 100% data. 
After you have made your selection, close this pop-up window. Next, select your de desired geography by clicking on the Geographies menu on the left-hand side of your screen. First, in the Select Geographic Type drop-down list, select Place Within a State. Next, select the state Montana in the State drop-down list. In the third drop-down list, scroll down to Find and select Butte Silver Bow Montana. Once you have added your geography to your selections box in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, close that geography search window. Next, we can choose our desired race group. In the race ethnic group filter option, click on race and Hispanic origin 2010 code base. From this next screen, scroll down and check or click on American Indian and Alaska Native alone or in combination with one or more other races. Add this group to your selections box. Once you have confirmed this group was added, close this pop-up screen. Next, select or click on table QTP2, single years of age and sex, 2010, and click view. This table shows both the counts and percentages of individuals who identified as American Indian and Alaska Native, alone or in combination with one or more additional races, by single years of age and sex living in Butte, Montana. If you would like to download this table, from this screen you can click on the download icon in the upper middle section of the screen. From here, you may select various formats to output your data, including comma-separated Excel files, PDF, Excel, or RTF. Once you have made your selection, click OK. Now let's talk about our most recent ATS product releases. At the end of May, the Census Bureau released new detailed estimates about the social, economic, and housing characteristics of hundreds of race, tribal, Hispanic, and ancestry groups at numerous geographic levels. This is the first time this level of statistical detail has been available for groups since the 2000 census. The new products, based on the 20, 2006 through 2010 ACS, are generally comparable to estimates generated from the census 2000 long form. To access this information based on the 2006 through 2010 American Community Survey and to learn more about the special data release, you can visit the webpage at the bottom of this slide. The purpose of these two new products is to employ ACS data aggregated over a five-year period to provide reliable estimates of detailed social, economic, and housing characteristics for selected race, tribal, Hispanic origin, and ancestry population groups at different levels of geography. Historically, these types of data products were produced from the decennial census long form, but available only once every 10 years. With the onset of the American Community Survey, these data became available on an annual basis, and now with the new ACS five-year products, they are available in iterated form for many diverse racial and ethnic communities across the United States. The main purpose of the product is to create new ACS data products that at a minimum provide data users with the information that is similar to what was available over 10 years ago from the Census 2000 Summary File 4 and the Census 2000 AIN Summary File. These new products are planned to be produced once every five years, and this was the first release. We wanted to ensure coverage of all major topics in the ACS for these two new data products. And on this slide, you can see examples of the different topics included in the, in the new data products. There are a number of important social characteristics, such as household, family, marital status, language spoken at home, educational attainment, and school enrollment. Economic characteristics, such as employment status, occupation, income, earnings, poverty, receipt of food stamps, and housing characteristics, such as housing value and cost, mortgage status, rent, etc. To be included on the iteration list for the ACS selected population tables, which includes geographies at very low levels, we have a census 2010 population threshold of at least 7,000 nationally. However, there are a few numerically small population groups that do not meet the population threshold of at least 7,000 nationally, but were grandfathered onto the selected population tables because they were included in similar census 2000 data products. Using the 2010 census data counts, a population threshold of at least 100 people nationally was used to determine which tribes would be included on the iteration list for the American Indian and Alaska Native tables. To release a data table, another threshold was applied. In order for data tables to be released for a specific group in a specific geography, 
there must be at least 50 unweighted sample cases of that group in that geographic area. For example, you will only be able to see data for Navajos in Phoenix, Arizona, if there were at least 50 unweighted sample cases of Navajos in Phoenix, Arizona, in the 2006 through 2010 ACS data. The census is conducted once every 10 years to provide an official count of the entire U.S. population to Congress. Use numbers from the 2010 census to obtain counts of the population and their basic characteristics, sex, age, race, Hispanic origin, and home ownership status. The Census Bureau collects American community survey data from a sample of the population in the United States and Puerto Rico, rather than from the whole population. It is important to remember all ACS data are survey estimates. To help you interpret the reliability of the estimate, the Census Bureau publishes a margin of error for every ACS estimate. Now that I have talked briefly about the types of information available in the new ACS products, let's look at an example of how to get to the data. In the next example, I will show you how to get several indicators of economic characteristic data for AINs living in Fresno, California. First, under the Topics drop-down menu, click on Data Set to expand the selection. Then select 2010 ACS Selected Population Tables. Once you have made your selection, close this pop-up screen. Next, select your desired geography by clicking on the Geographies menu. First, in the Select Geographic Type drop-down list, select Place Within State. Next, select California in the State drop-down list. In the third drop-down list, scroll down to find and select Fresno City, California from the third drop-down menu. Add Fresno to your selections box. Once you have added your geography to your selections box, close the geography search window. Next, we will choose our desired race group. In the race slash ethnic group filters option, click on race and Hispanic origin, this time ACS code based. From this screen, scroll down and check or click on American Indian and Alaska Native alone or in combination with one or more other races. Add this group to your selections box. Once you verify this group was added, close this pop-up window. Next, select table DP03, Selected Economic Characteristics. Before continuing to the data, I would like to note that you can download the output from this screen by clicking on the download icon instead of the view icon. This will output all data in a zip file that can be viewed in Excel. This option is useful if you have multiple iteration groups or multiple geographies to view. From this table, you can get information regarding such things as unemployment, employment status for the population 16 years old and over. You can also get information on income for both households and families. A good source of information regarding the new ACS survey data may be found from the link shown at the bottom of this slide. Accuracy of data files contain information on sampling design, estimation methodology, and accuracy of the data. Here you can also find information on how to calculate standard errors for derived estimate data. I hope this information has been helpful. If you would like more information about the topics discussed in the webinar, please visit the links above. At this time, I would be happy to answer any questions on the